Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Sabrina Adler and I am the principal at Ralston. This is my second year at Ralston and in the district and my seventh, uh, sixth year overall being a principal. Prior to this, I was a principal for four years in the Redwood City School District and an assistant principal for two years. And then prior to that, I was a teacher. I taught mostly math, middle school math, but I have taught all core subject areas as well. I also am a parent in the district. I have a second grader at Central and a fifth grader at Central. Kelly, I'm gonna hand it over to you to introduce yourself. Good evening, I'm Kelly Jorgensen. I'm one of the assistant principals at Ralston. This is my second year as well. Um, I am an ex-science teacher. I taught sixth, seventh and eighth grade science for many, many years. Um, I love my time at Ralston. We're looking forward to our incoming sixth grade. Patrick? Hi, I'm Patrick Wilson. I'm also an assistant principal at Ralston. This is also my second year. Um, prior to that, I taught social studies and English for about nine years up in Burlingame. Hi, everyone. My name is Tiffany Sam, and I am currently the eighth grade counselor at Ralston. I will be the sixth grade counselor next year, but more on that later. This is also my second year at Ralston and second year being a school counselor in general. All right, so you can notice the theme here. We are all in our second year in BRSSD and at Ralston, and we are looking forward to next year. Three's a charm, right? It'll be the third year for all of us and excited to be back together. This evening, we are gonna go through a variety of topics and then we will try to answer some of your questions throughout and then take some time at the end. Go ahead and switch slides, Jerome. Perfect. So we're going to go over bell schedules and classes and how that works. Talk a little about academic and social emotional support through our counseling department, school spirit and engagement. Talk about our clubs, our groups, sports, some upcoming dates that are probably of interest to you, and then contact information and questions at the end. So for those that don't know, we are a traditional comprehensive middle school, which means that our students switch classes generally every period, they mix and match. So some students will have math first periods, some will have PE, some might have science. It's, uh, there's a lot of students. We have around 1100 students overall at Ralston and about 375 in our incoming sixth grade class. So a lot of mixing and matching happening. They'll meet a lot of different kids. As you look at our bell schedule for this year, and we anticipate that it'll be pretty similar for next year, you'll notice all the color coding and that each student has six classes each day. There is a seventh period that replaces a period each day. So you can kind of see that that purple class moves all over the place. We do serve breakfast at our snack time. And then on Wednesdays, it's before school because we have to get two meals in before the students leave. And then our lunch is during our lunchtime. However, on Wednesdays, it's during snack time. So the kids get adjusted to the schedule. It looks really confusing right now, but it does get easier. And you'll notice that the homeroom class is in green because that is their same first period teacher. So whatever they are assigned to first period, that is their homeroom teacher as well, where they do some SEL work and other things in the morning to start the day. Next slide. So you're probably wondering what are these different classes that they're taking? A it's a little bit different in sixth grade, but the language arts equivalent is called literature and composition. So they will have two periods together with the same group of kids and the same teachers so that they can get a lot of reading and writing practice in and just adjusting to middle school. That'll be different when they get to seventh and eighth grade where they'll have just one language arts class. In sixth grade, they have social studies, they have math, 6CC or 6AS. So CC stands for Common Core and AS is for Advanced Standing. So that is our faster paced class. And we'll talk a little bit more about math in a little bit. Science, PE, and then our students in sixth grade get an elective. It's either music, wheel, or some kind of academic support. Again, in seventh and eighth grade, they'll have the one period of language arts, which means that they will get two elective periods and we'll talk about a little what wheel is, but they'll get to choose from a bigger range of electives when they are seventh and eighth graders. Next slide. 
I wanted to just touch a little bit upon our options for our students with IEPs, individualized education plans, and our 504 students. So classes can just look like what I described on the prior slide, seven same classes. But for our students with IEPs, we do have a little bit of a different option. So there is a resource class for literature and composition. So it's gonna be a core again with the same students and same teacher, but it'll be taught by one of our resource special ed teachers. We have a smaller group math program. So a class, probably around 10 kids in the resource classes. So that's gonna be six CC. And then directed studies with that same case manager slash teacher, which is an academic support class where they get to do their homework and get support with things that they need from the day. For our 504 students, we do offer the option generally if there's space to be in the directed studies class, although we have something called study skills, which is very similar, it just doesn't have a case manager IEP teacher that teaches it. This year we offered a smaller core in sixth grade, a literature and composition core with around 10 students for some of our 504 students, our ELs, or students that just needed a little bit more work than the other students with their reading and writing. And we are hoping to offer that again next year. You might wonder how do we place into that specific class? What we do is we articulate with all of the feeder schools in our district in April, May, and they let us know all the students that have IEPs, all that have 504s, students who maybe need some more academic support, given that they're going to have seven different classes, six different teachers. So they may recommend certain things as the elective class or things that they need for support. Next slide. I know that this is a really popular topic. I'm passionate about it too, since I was a math teacher, our math placement, so your in-district students have already taken the INSPECT, which is a multiple choice test that is standard space. That happened between February 1st and 3rd. That's part one of what we use to look at math placement. Then they, in March, will take the MARS tasks or the MAC as they call it, which is a set of five performance tasks, where generally each problem has an entry point that any student should generally be able to be able to enter the problem, be able to do the first part, and then the problem builds. So sometimes it continues from that first part, and sometimes it's a totally separate question that relates somehow to that first part. So they do five of these tasks where they show their thinking and they explain their work, and sometimes they draw pictures, and that is something that we look at as well for placement. And then as you're probably familiar with the SBAC, so that's in May, which is our state testing, and we use all three of those pieces of data to come up with placement scores. And we look at kind of past historical numbers. We'll look at this year's numbers and see what makes sense based on the success of the students in the past as our cut point. So it could be slightly different each year, but generally fairly consistent as to how they're gonna be placed. We will do our best to get that placement to you as soon as we can, but often we're waiting on those SBAC scores and we don't get them till late June, sometimes early July. So that's why you may not find out math placement till July or early August, depending on what we get and when we get that. Some people ask if our students are taking Russian School of Math classes or Kumon or they're doing a community college course, can we use that to help place into our pathway here? And the answer is no. Again, we're gonna use this placement data and see how the students are doing. The pathway on the right is kind of a picture of how our students can be placed. What I really like about Ralston is there's quite a bit of flexibility. As you can see with the dotted lines, we don't leave students stuck in one place. There are opportunities to advance and still get to algebra by eighth grade and be ready for geometry in high school. We'll be sending out this slide deck and you can take a look at my principal's copies from last year and this year. They're a little bit different and they have a lot of different information about kind of the difference between 6CC and 6AS. You can see a little bit about the topics. You can see more information about placement, how that factors into Carlmont. So lots of different things. Typically every month I host a principal's coffee on a curricular topic. I always do one every year on math because I know that's a topic where families have a lot of questions, but we're really striving to be more transparent so that parents know how placement works, et cetera. So in this just principal's coffee, you'll see the different criteria of how math placement works once students are at Ralston and 
going through sixth and seventh grade. So I encourage you to take a look at both of those slide decks when you get a chance and we send this deck out. Next slide. Okay, I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about sixth grade electives. So our sixth graders do get one elective for their sixth grade year. Some of the possibilities for your sixth grader could be in beginning band, sixth grade intermediate band, beginning orchestra, sixth grade intermediate orchestra or choir. If you don't do any of those and you're not doing uh, study skills or directed studies, what we'll talk about in a minute or math support, most of our sixth graders go into our wheel program. And what our wheel is, is that they are more condensed versions of our electives that we offer in seventh and eighth grade. They get to try out four different classes for the year. And the offerings could vary from year to year. For instance, this year, we offered some drama classes. We've offered some French classes, things like that. So it does change year from year as far as what those classes are. Um, study skills, directed studies for our RSP students and math support would be considered the electives for those particular students. And like what Mrs. Adler says, uh, what she said before, with study skills and directed studies and math support, those would be uh, looked at by administrators and also by teachers to see if your student would qualify for those. You can go to the next slide. So this is a slide of what a wheel looks like. So we have two wheel periods this year and we have a fifth period wheel and a sixth period wheel. So here is kind of what it would look like. So for instance, your student may start the beginning of the year in drama and then they would move to animation, to strategy with that teacher, to coding, to fun with French. The sixth period wheel we could possibly start with art class, then move to strategy, to coding, and then to drama. So it depends on where your student ends up, but they'll get to experience at least four different classes for the year. You can move to the next slide, thank you. I'll talk a little bit about our PE program. We have a sixth grade class that is specifically just sixth graders within a class with a teacher. And then we also have seventh and eighth grade classes. Our units are mainly outdoors um, in the gym and in the MUR. They're four to six uh, week units. They could range from flag football to basketball. Uh, the past couple of years, we've been doing a really, really fun dance unit where kids are learning how to do line dancing. And then they're actually coming up with their own choreographed dances and then performing them for the rest of the class. It's been a huge hit uh, the past couple of years. Every day for PE, our, our students dress out in their PE uniforms. We do have locker rooms for boys and girls, and then we also have non-binary locker rooms as well. Uh, the teachers will check in with each student at the beginning of the year to find out their changing location preference, and we will give you more information this summer about ordering uniforms. You don't need to order a uniform, but the majority of kids do like wearing the uniforms provided. If you don't want to order a uniform, we have alternate thing, alternative things that the kids can wear for PE. Here are a picture, pictures of some of our electives that we have. We have a coding and animation class. We have an art class. We have another, that one's of a, of an animation class as well. Um, we have some band and orchestra pictures. And then the one on the lower left-hand side is our new elective. Um, it's a STEM class, really cool, great teacher. Kids are super excited about it. Just to give you a preview of some of our seventh and eighth grade electives after your first year at Ralston, Here's some of the things that we do offer, animation, art, band, ceramics, choir, and coding and story tech, culinary arts, which is another big hit with our middle schoolers, directed studies and study skills, drama, French 1A and 1B, fun with physics, a math support orchestra, PBL, psychology of happiness, reading support with our ELL students as well, robotics, Spanish 1A and B, a strategy class, STEM exploration, student government, and yearbook. A 
Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about our counseling department. Um, Ralston is fortunate uh, to, uh, to have three full-time counselors, um, counselors in an admin loop with each class. So as I mentioned earlier, I am the current eighth grade counselor. However, I will be jumping down to sixth grade next year with Ms. Jorgensen. And you'll see there that Mr. Wilson and Ms. Kafka will stick with seventh grade. And then Mrs. Adler and Mr. Stark will go up to eighth grade with their students. It's nice that the students are able to get a consistent um, counselor and administrator to follow them throughout their years in middle school because it's such a vital time in their life. And to have someone that knows them so well, they're able to advocate for them and go with them throughout their three years is really vital and crucial to them. Um, although we meet once a week on Tuesdays with our school psychologist and our special education department to triage and discuss students, we also collaborate daily to triage um, and to resolve student needs as they come up because they're popping up on a daily basis pretty much uh, minute by minute as well. Um, we also send out a monthly counseling newsletter where we go over information. This will pertain to more to you guys um, when you guys when your students are in eighth grade but we send a lot of high school articulation information and we just talk about the things that we're doing in terms of small groups um, clubs and how we're spending our time as counselors um, you may be familiar with our current SEL um, in elementary it's called purposeful people but in the middle school level it's called character strong and this is something that we push into our homeroom time we have that eight to nine minute advisory in the morning and so it's a combination of character strong where they you know, are talking about different skills that they can use on a day to day basis with their peers. But we also have a book called morning classroom conversations where teachers are facilitating community circles and getting to know their students better. And it's essentially to foster you know, community resilience and just empathy for one another. And we um, what I love about middle school counselors in, in general, you know, elementary school is very social and emotional and we're talking about how we name our feelings and and getting along with one another and high school is very much academic centered middle school is that perfect balance of both you know hormones are changing we're learning more about ourselves and so a lot of things come up during this time and uh, i know that the administrators feel similarly and that middle school is a time where we make mistakes and boy do a lot of them happen at this time and so we're supporting all of our students and navigating what those mistakes look like how we can prevent them in the future and it's all just a really great learning experience that we you know support them through Next slide, please. So a few of the counseling groups that I wanted to share and talk about were currently, we have two happening simultaneously. There's about eight students in each group. There's one designated just for sixth graders and then another with a combo of seventh and eighth graders. And similarly to how our you know, directed studies and study skills students are chosen, we're taking you know, referrals from teachers who are noticing that maybe a student could use some more social skill support, we are out in the yard constantly and we're noticing these students and observing them ourselves. And we partner with our district mental health team to run these groups. Um, last year, we had a grief group in the spring for um, parent, for students who lost a parent that we're, you know, what, that we will be bringing back this um, semester as well. Next slide, please. I'll be talking a little bit about school spirit and engagement. Uh, over the last two years, one of our biggest goals really was to foster a sense of community and to bring fun back to school, especially coming out of the pandemic, coming out of distance learning. Uh, we knew that school was something for some of our students that became unfamiliar, at least in person. Uh, and so we are seeing some of those gaps develop from the pandemic, and it's important that we take a very, very um, direct approach when we're talking about school spirit and engagement. You can see here we have some of our basketball teams, some of our championship basketball teams. Uh, we have obviously we have spirit days. Um, the PE department put on a flash mob uh, last year, which was really a lot of fun. A lot of different cool things here. Um, next slide, please. Um, one thing that you'll be invited to before the start of the school year is our welcome back barbecues. We do um, have a sixth, seventh uh, grade barbecue or sixth and seventh grade separately. Um, and we do our web orientation where student government works with um, our sixth graders, incoming sixth graders, and they're meeting students from not only, you know, seeing old friends, but meeting students from other elementaries. Uh, in smaller groups of maybe no more than 20. Uh, and our student government uh, leaders show them around the school, give them a, a tour of the school, ask, answer any questions they might have, lead them through some activities so they can really build some camaraderie. And those groups do meet 
throughout the school year as well. We also have some lunchtime competitions we do through our student government uh, class. The homerooms compete against each other. It's a lot of fun. They're competing for spirit points throughout the year. We have a number of socials throughout the year. Um, music does a great job with their showcases and their concerts. Um, many times we find our electives are collaborating across uh, classrooms. So we'll see animation and guitar collaborating or choir. Uh, animation and coding often collaborates as well. Um, we do have a number of dances throughout the year. We just had our Valentine's Day dance and it went off, it went really well. Um, students were really well behaved. Um, we had a good time. Uh, we do also do student of the month celebrations every month where teachers can nominate students. They get a little something and we take a picture together. Um, one thing I'm personally proud of is every single student gets a birthday card from the administrators. Um, and it, it, it's very important that we do that just so that we can show that we're, we're seeing each student individually. Um, and then finally, we do have other web and student government uh, events and after school sports, lots of clubs and groups as well. Uh, next slide, please. You can see here some of our clubs and groups. I'm really proud of our BSU, which was founded last year. We also have a board game club, gardening club, homework club. Uh, we do lots of um, makerspace club, math Olympiads meet after school. We also have math counts, robotics club, our saga, which is our sexuality and gender alliance club. Um, and then we have our SEL groups that um, as Sam mentioned. And this year we're doing a school musical, Matilda. Um, last year it was the Lion King Jr. It was a great performance. I'm looking forward to Matilda this year. And then finally, we also have our Upstanders Club. Next slide, please. For after school sports, we do compete in the Art Davidson Sports League. We're competing against San Mateo, Foster City, Half Moon Bay, San Carlos, Ravenswood, Palo Alto, and uh, Nesbitt and uh, other DRSSD schools. In the fall, we do girls volleyball and cross country. In the winter, we do basketball. In the spring, we do boys volleyball, tennis and track and field. And we're bringing soccer this year, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Kelly, you wanna talk a little bit about our partnership with MSI? Sure, so this year we were lucky enough to partner up with the Marine Science Institute with our sixth grade science classes. What this looked like for us this year is our students were able to have three different times that they were able to um, do some really fun hands-on activities with the Marine Science Institute. The first activity that we did is they brought models of our watershed into the classrooms and did some watershed work with our students. They then um, took our students down to Water Dog Lake, which you can see in the upper center picture, where our kids are doing water quality testing. They're testing for phosphates, they're testing for pH, they're testing for dissolved oxygen, things that I didn't get to test for until I was in college. So our kids are having this opportunity in sixth grade to get to know their watershed, get to know how we are affecting our own watershed and the results within our water. Um, the bottom picture in the center is our final field trip that we take to the Marine Science Institute. And you can see there that we have kids in canoes. So we do a canoe, a full canoe day, which with each one of the classes, we generally we have three students per canoe. They're learning how to work together in order to get the canoe from one side of a slough to the other. It's pretty interesting and fun. Um, along with that, they're doing more water quality testing within our slough, which is actually at the end of our watershed before it heads, heads to the bay and then out to the ocean. We're taking all that information, getting that data, and then coming up with some conclusion, conclusions about our watershed and how we can help the effect of our watershed. So it's a really great program. Um, our kids have said nothing but really great things about the program. And as you can see by the looks on their faces, they're just eager to learn and, and eager to get outside and do something fun. Go to the next slide. All right, web, where everyone belongs. So this is something that our sixth graders will be involved with starting at the um, very, right before school starts. We will invite you all to come to school on our web activity day, orientation day, 
where you will come and meet with our uh, student government. You will have some leaders that will lead you through activities, a tour, um, and just generally have a lot of fun and learn about Ralston and what it looks like, what it feels like to be here, show you all the important spots, like where the bathrooms are, where the locker rooms are, where all your classes will be. Um, but also throughout the year, you will meet with your web leaders as well. We um, usually meet on Fridays, you know, like once a month or so. And you can see in the center picture at the top, um, after a meeting with our web leaders, we often get something special, a treat of some sort, but they lead us through an activity just to build that community together. And then uh, they get to eat lunch together and have a good time. And again, it's another time for the students to ask more questions from their web leaders and get to know Ralston a little bit better. We move to the next slide. So when is our web orientation gonna be? We already know, we're letting you know first. Thursday, August 10th from 8.30 to 12.30. And what that will do will help you do, to transition to middle school, to meet other sixth graders from other feeder schools. You'll have some seventh and eighth grade mentors, do fun activities and connections throughout the school year. So if some upcoming dates you may want to have on your calendar, again, we will send out these slides. March 1st is a music informational night. So if you play an instrument already, this would be a good one to attend. You can register and they will send you the link. They're going to go over a little bit about how music works in the middle school, but it is one of their seven classes. Last year, we did put in the course catalog, which will be in there again, beginning orchestra, beginning band and give those students an opportunity to learn an instrument that decided not to take that at the elementary school. But we have to have enough enrollment to be able to have a fairly full class of around 20, 25 kids. So we didn't actually get to offer those this year because there weren't enough students that signed up. But if there are, we will definitely have that next year. So mostly the informational night is for the returning students, but you can come check it out and learn a little bit more about music. Some of you are probably wondering, when will we know if we are in Ralston? As you may recall, there was a form that went out, I believe it was last week, that asked you to rank the different choices of the three middle schools. So we are anticipating that in April, hopefully the earlier the better, especially for us because we have a very complex master schedule, that you will be notified of whether you got your top choice or not. We're hoping that everyone will get their top choice. And then we will be... Um, sending out the elective selection stuff and some other information for you to start choosing your classes. Looks like my um, picture there is covering one of the words, but we're going to be visiting the feeder schools as well and just going out there to introduce ourselves in person, let the students ask questions. We'll throw out some swag to get them excited. So we will be doing that all throughout April and potentially early May as well. On the 19th in April, our sixth graders, a bunch of them will be hosting a panel. And that's a great time to hear a little bit more about the sixth grade experience from the sixth graders themselves and for the students to ask questions. So we will send out the link as we get closer. As Kelly already mentioned, we've got our web orientation. We will register the kids and get them situated from 8.30 to 9. And then we begin our program at nine o'clock and we will feed them before we return them to you at 12.30. It looks like a lot of fun, but unfortunately it is for students only parents. So you can say goodbye to them at the gate and we will let them come in. I know that's actually really hard sometimes for parents, but it's a great start for them to be independent and meeting other kids that day. We do a good job of mixing up the groups as well. So we'll send out a link this summer and you'll let us know if you're coming. And then we deliberately mix up all the schools so that each group has a variety of different kids so that they meet some kids right away. On Monday, August 14th, we will have a sixth grade barbecue. It's free, hot dogs, chips, water bottles. We'll have our buildings open so that the kids can follow their schedule and practice it again. We do that during the web orientation day as well. They get their schedule and they'll move from class to class practicing but many of them wanna try that again and just see what's going on. So that'll be that night. And then for our seventh and eighth grade families, we do a barbecue the night before. And then before you know it, school will start again on August 16th. So we're looking forward to all of these things that are coming up.
pretty quickly. Next slide. So what are the next steps? Well, our current CRSSD fifth graders, you have that middle school choice form. It is due by this Friday. Please make sure that you fill that out. Each family got an individual link. If for some reason you don't think you've seen it, contact your principal or your office because we have all of the individual links. They do, but I have them too, for each family so you can make sure that you fill that out, especially if you wanna get your first choice. In April, be on the lookout for a welcome letter from me and information about elective signups. So you'll get a course catalog with more descriptions and be able to see a little bit more about the courses. And then I know the highly anticipated math placement notification. Again, we have to wait until we get those scores. I know there was a question in the Q&A about, I don't think my student took that test. They might have, and you just don't know it. There may have been kids that were absent. I have, I can see the preliminary data just because I'm trying to plan number of sections for next year, just as a guess. And I saw that 400, almost 430 of the 465 took it already when I got that data last week. So most have already taken that. Eventually your teachers will probably share that information with you. But again, there's probably still kids that haven't taken it. As far as our non-BRSSD fifth graders, if you haven't already, you want to complete that new student enrollment process by March 17th. Ideally, your best chance in getting into your first choice would be to do it in that first enrollment period. Be on the lookout then. My guess is probably May. Once we know how the internal students are falling with places, you will get an opportunity to fill out that middle school choice form as well. But again, we're going to give priority to our current fifth graders in district. And then June 16th, you'll be notified if you enrolled in that first period, what your school assignment is. And then second enrollment period is on the 17th. You're probably wondering how do we get placed into math and without taking the same tests, et cetera. Once you know if you're enrolled in Ralston or if you choose another school, you should be reaching out to your principal or look for a letter from one of us. For Ralston, you'll get some choices about elective selection. And then we will set up times for students to come and take placement tests. And that may have to wait until August. We'll, we're pretty flexible and we'll work with you to just make sure everyone gets what they need done. Next slide. I think many of you have attended some of the other presentations as well. We just, I wanna echo on behalf of my two colleagues at the other schools that there's a great fit for all of our students that are gonna be sixth graders next year. Ralston might be a great fit for them, but one of the other schools might be a good fit as well. So you're gonna look at the different pieces of information and you know your kid best and where they might fit best with the different size of the school, the different programs, the different interests, but there's a great choice for everyone. And there's a lot of different supports and activities at each of the schools. So I encourage you to take a look at those. We will resend out this presentation along with the recordings for the other two that you may or may not have attended for Nesbitt and for Sandpiper to make sure that you have all of the, the videos, all of the information before you make those choices. So thank you for considering all options. Next slide. We've included our information in here. Again, you there are three counselors. Tiffany, we're planning for her to be the sixth grade counselor next year, but our other counselors are very friendly too if you have questions or some of you might have already known them. For example, Mr. Stark was at Sandpiper prior to this year, so some of you might have a relationship, but we are all happy to answer your questions and help with anything that you need. We're a friendly bunch, I think, and I'm sure Kelly and Patrick and Tiffany would echo this. It's a really large school. There's never a dull moment. It is very fast paced, but despite it being really big, as they said, we check in at the end of every day with counselors and the admin team because we're running parallel sometimes all day, triaging whatever is thrown at us at the moment. But we really do know most of the students. So just because I'm going to be the eighth grade lead next year doesn't mean I don't know the other two grade levels pretty well as well. We really do make an effort to get to know all the kids. We're all out on the yard supervising at lunch together with all the students out there and they come and chat with us. We help run activities. So it's a big campus, a little mini city as Mr. Donovan calls it, but we also are tight knit in a different way as well. So that is a little bit about us. We wanna just take some time to answer questions. So we're gonna take a look at the Q&A here. 
I had one about masks. I know you probably saw many pictures with masks. Masks are optional, but many of our students still wear them. And some of the pictures, I'll be honest, are from last year. Some are from this year. So uh, that might be why you see some. And some are from the beginning of the year. The student gov picture you saw with all the kids in red and yellow, that was from the very beginning when we got back this year. So that is a little bit about that one. Let's see, how do you handle families with middle schoolers who are planning to move to Belmont later in the year? So that's a great question. It'll depend on space. If you are moving mid-year, I will say that Ralston still has a wait list. So we were not able to get everybody in this year. We do have a cap because we only have a certain number of classrooms. And right now we are using every single classroom on campus. So we are capping our classes at around 375. And so if there's not room when you move, it means that you will join the waitlist if you want to come to Ralston and you'll be placed at one of the other two schools. All right. Regardless of when we registered or live in Redwood Shore. So if you're in district right now, the priority is going to go to our internal students. So you're filling out that placement. So um, in the past, it's been that certain schools feed automatically. Again, they've changed that process a little bit this year to make sure that we capture everybody's preferences and try to get everyone to their first choice schools. There will be priority. Sandpiper students can remain at Sandpiper. They get priority there. Nesbitt students get preference at Nesbitt. But any from any of the BRSSD K-8s or just TK-5 schools that want to come to Ralston and that's their first choice, we are going to do our best to try to get every single student in. And I think that we should be in pretty good shape with that. Kelly or Patrick, would you like to take a couple questions? Yeah, I saw a question about um, doing outside sports regarding PE. So we do have an independent PE program. Um, I have the paperwork for that. If you're interested in independent PE, we do offer it first period or sixth period, which means your student can come to school um, for their second period class by staying home or doing their workouts in the morning, or they can leave early for their sixth period class. Um, again, if you're interested in that, please feel free to reach out to me and I can give you the paperwork on that that shows what needs to happen for, for that to occur. Uh, another one about lockers. We do not have lockers at Ralston Middle School. Um, we do have class sets of textbooks within each uh, classroom. And the students are also given a Chromebook that they use every day as well. So they carry their Chromebooks and any other uh, binders or folders that they need for their classes. But we do often send home a, um, a textbook for either social studies or science that will stay at home as well. So if there's homework or they need to study from their book, they have a book at home and then we have a class set at school. Okay, a couple more questions. Are there options for after school care on campus? No, there are not. There just has not been enough demand. We do have homework club twice a week after school for an hour from 3.15 to 4.15 this year. It's on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We also have it three mornings a week starting at 7.30, but we do not have childcare. A lot of the students take SAM trams or they walk down to somewhere. They'll go down to the community center and go hang out there. But unfortunately we do not. As far as the bus, there are three different bus lines for SAM trams. 60, 67, and 68. And we have a different grade level per bus. So we have a sixth grade, 67, a sixth grade, 68, for example, a seventh grade, 67, a seventh grade, 68. So there's a lot of buses coming in and out. We do mix for the bus 60s. And you can check out Sam Trans and learn a little bit about that. But students need to get a clipper card or have a dollar to pay for the bus. And we have a whole system. They learn how to line up and how to get out to the buses and we load them, they get numbers and we keep it very, very organized so that we can get them safely onto the bus and they're not running to get there. I saw a question about how big our class is. Typically a class size is around 26 to 28 students. The teachers do have a contract that we follow 
and cannot have a class of more than 32 unless it's a music class um, or so there's a few other exceptions, but generally we're trying to keep it lower than 28 if we can and trying to keep it as small as we can for students because we know that there is benefit to keeping it small. As far as homework, I would say typically students have around an hour or so of homework a night in sixth grade. Our priorities are really language arts and math. So I would expect they have math almost every night, 20 to 30 minutes, and then they're probably reading 30 minutes a night. They'll sometimes have science homework and social studies homework, but a lot of that is finishing things from class, projects. I fully believe that the kids need to be kids, even though we're trying to get them ready for high school. So I've really emphasized to staff that I want the bulk of the homework to just be language arts and math, and that the others are just kind of filling in the gaps because I really don't want them to have hours of homework each night. I know many of the students play multiple sports. And so we want them to have a life too and be balanced. Patrick, would you like to take a few questions? Sure, absolutely. There's a few questions about our approach to bullying, a few about social media. Um, first of all, uh, obviously at any school, bullying is not acceptable, but uh, in, in Ralston in particular, we take a restorative justice approach. We want to understand why the bullying is occurring. We want to meet with that student uh, and their family to discuss what's going on. And we also want to meet with the student who's being bullied uh, and hear about how they've been impacted. And if that student is comfortable, share that impact with the bully to get a full understanding of what's happening and then figure out how can we make it right? How can we repair the harm? You know, it's very easy to just hit bullying with a one size fit all approach, uh, but that tends to not fix the problem. When, a, when the bully gets an understanding of how the harm or what they've done to harm another student, they get a bigger, bigger picture, they're less likely to continue with the bullying. It takes time, it takes work, it takes a lot of people involved in that process, but it's something we take very seriously. Um, in terms of social media, um, we definitely rely on students sharing what's, you know, what's going on in their lives, what's going on on social media. Uh, and we encourage students and families to report or share anything that's inappropriate that's happening online. Obviously, three of us cannot monitor Snapchat and, and all the different, you know, Instagram, all the different things at all times. Uh, but we really appreciate when parents uh, and students help us out with those things. Um, our phones allowed on campus. What's the school policy? They need to be off and away during the school day. Um, and generally, we want students to be connecting with each other uh, face to face. And it, I think we've all been in these situations where we see um, young students and adults standing in circles on their phone and they're not actually connecting with each other. We also want to make sure the cell phones aren't being used in the classroom without teacher permission. We know sometimes they are necessary for a project. We like to do, there's some cool projects going on right now in social studies where students are filming uh, for one of their classes. You know, that's something that the teacher works out, but generally the phone needs to be off and away during the school day. Let's see if there's any others. Um, incidents on the bus definitely should be reported to the school. We wanna know what's going on there and, and figure out how we can address it uh with families and with students so yeah if you hear about anything going on on the bus we do encourage you to report those incidents Let's see if there's anything else i can answer There is a question about um, electives. And I just wanna let you know that the majority of our sixth graders will be going into the wheel um, elective, it, unless your student is planning to do music of any sort, whether it be choir, band, or orchestra. Um, and if your student is planning on doing um, study skills, things like that, uh, a math support class, that would be considered their elective. When our sixth graders turn into seventh graders, they do have two elective choices. So that is something that you can think about moving into seventh grade. 
for sports teams, are there tryouts or can everyone join regardless of ability? It depends on the sport and the number of coaches that we have. So typically volleyball, a lot of times basketball, not everybody gets on the team because there are too many students and we have limited facilities and the school, the other schools have limited numbers of teams, but some are not cut sports. So cross country, track and field, everyone can participate. If we can, we try to get everyone on a team. So there will be kids that have hardly ever played that will get on a team if we have the coaching and the numbers work out right. So it really depends on the sport and you'll get a little bit more info as that's happening from our, our athletic department. We have two PE teachers that act as our athletic directors and oversee that. So you'll get to know Mr. Carter Cox and Ms. Deb Blackwell who oversee that. Couple questions about proximity to Ralston and getting in. I Again, if you're in district currently as a fifth grader at one of our BRSSD schools, you should get your first choice. There was a question about, are there caps at the other two schools? There are, but typically Ralston is the one that fills up the quickest. So we did have students, unfortunately this year that live right near the district office, for example, which we know is right near Ralston and they were assigned to Sandpiper and Nesbitt if they were out of district. Uh, students. So it's really going to depend on how many of the current fifth graders opt for Ralston next year as to how much space we'll have for those that are at the charter school or moving, coming in, et cetera. So we won't really know that right away. Again, if you put your preference in and Ralston's your first choice and you're in that first enrollment period, you'll have a better chance of getting into Ralston, but it didn't guarantee it last year. So we'll have more information as we get our preferences from our incoming students this year, which we'll hopefully have sooner rather than later. I had a couple of questions about the music info night. We will record that and then we will send that out. I had a question about guitar. Guitar is actually one of our seventh and eighth grade electives. So it is not generally part of our music program per se. And we do not accept requests for specific classes for the wheel, no, sorry. Just uh, security like measures at school. So our school is completely enclosed with um, gates and fences. Um, there is always somebody out walking around, whether it be our PE department or one of the six of us. Um, but there's constantly people moving around the school. We all have um, radios that we talk to each other on. Um, we have an SRO. Uh, which is a student resource officer that we meet with quite often. And he comes up to visit us, not only to check in with us, but also to visit the students as well, either during snack or lunch, show his face. Um, so we have a very close uh, relationship with the Belmont Police Department and with the fire department as well. If a child goes to private school for sixth grade, but wants to return to Ralston in seventh grade, is that possible? It's possible, again, it's gonna be dependent on space. So for example, next year, we don't anticipate a lot of spaces in our seventh and eighth grade because we're really full right now. So we will take what we can. We know that people move. So sometimes there are spaces, but again, can't guarantee even due to proximity that Ralston will be an option. Snack, how long is it? It is 15 minutes. And then how long is lunch? It is 40 minutes. So plenty of time and then there's transition time around that. There's a question about the other recordings. So I will send those out to all of the BRSSD principals this weekend with all three links so that you have all of those recordings. I've also been sending things to Belmont Oaks as well. And then we will make sure those are on the district website and we'll get those on our website. I do have to apologize. We have a brand new website that we were hoping to update sooner, but we are still in the process. So if you have a question, feel free to reach out to us. We are working on getting it updated and working with a professional to help us get that content updated. So we're kind of in the process with that. I wanted to give an opportunity for one of our parents who's on our panel here tonight to speak and introduce herself, talk a little bit about school force and PTA. She joins us and um, you can take questions as well. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Nivedita Sastrabute. I have a sixth grader at Ralston, and I have a freshman at um, Carlmont, um, and he also went through Ralston. 
Um, I'm here today as a school course um, co-chair. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you might have about school force um, and just to welcome you to this great community. Thank you. And we are always looking for parent volunteers and members for our PTA. I know your kids in middle school don't really want you on campus, but we really like you. And we would be happy to have you come supervise out on the yard. The more adults, the merrier out there. We'd love help picking out pizzas for any of our social events or coming to help serve lunch or breakfast. We have teachers that like to have parents come talk to students about their books that they're reading. Or one of our classes, we have parents that come in and volunteer and read with the students a couple of times a week just to help with the reading skills and the confidence. So there are opportunities in middle school. And then my favorite, of course, is chaperoning the dances. Again, lots of parents there. We, as Patrick mentioned, just had our Valentine's Day dance. That was a seventh and eighth grade dance. We had a Halloween dance for seventh and eighth grade. And then everybody crossed their fingers. We're having a sixth, seventh and eighth grade dance in April. That not only will that be the first dance for our sixth graders, but we are gonna combine with Nesbitt and Sam Piper as well and host that at Ralston. So it's gonna be one big party. We have dancing in the gym. One of the things that I've had at all my dances, so we've been doing it is we hire a photo booth person. And so the kids get pictures from the night and they don't have to have their phones out the whole time. They get to pick the backdrop, the props and take home a printed postcard with different poses. So that's really fun. And then some kids don't like to dance. So in our MUR, we set up a rec room kind of setup where we have pool, we have the hot shot basketball, we have some ski ball machines, we have board games, and they just like to hang out in there and be with their friends if they don't like to dance. And that's a great alternative as well. We sell snacks and drinks and they have a good time for two hours. And again, the kids have been really well behaved this year. So we're really proud of our Ralston Rams. And we do have our school resource officer on hand that works for the police department. He is out with us just making sure everything is safe. And as Kelly mentioned, we see him frequently. Often we know things happening in the community before others because they call and just make sure everything's okay or give us a heads up. So we're in constant contact. And even if it's a Sunday night, I've gotten calls at 10 p.m. from our SRO to let me know about things that we need to know. So really am proud of the Belmont Police Department and the efforts that they have to support us and Coralmont and the other schools. They're very involved and it's really nice that they know a lot of the kids and know a lot about our school. I think we have a couple more questions in the chat. I read there will be a change in how school meals are being ordered. Will parents no longer order their choices in advance? Great question. So you'll notice I, you'll learn, I like to volunteer for pilots because we have such a big school. I like to see how things work in action before we commit to them for the following year. So yes, Ralston will be piloting bulk ordering starting March 1st. And that means that parents will no longer pre-order for their students. So students can come to our breakfast windows and get breakfast if they want. So we're gonna pick the quantity we think we need. And we have a lot of historical data from the year. So we have a really good perspective on that. And they will get to come up and no more labels, which has been really a challenge for our students with the sticker labels they have to keep track of all day. Instead, they will punch in their six digit ID code and they will their picture will come up. I trained on the software this morning and they will get their meal. So parents won't have to worry about that and they can have breakfast. Same thing for lunch. We're gonna order three different meal options. And we generally know hot dogs and Mike's chicken sandwich and pizza and things that are more popular versus egg salad and beans and rice, but we're still gonna have all those options. So we will be placing those orders. And I send out a newsletter every Sunday night called the Ralston Reporter. I try to get out earlier in the day. It's gonna have the menu information for every week so the kids can plan with allergens and whether they wanna come and eat or not. So they'll come and come through the line and get food if they want it. And we've typically had leftovers every single day, been donating them to a shelter. So we think we'll be fine, but we're gonna test quantities the first week or two and just see how those numbers work. So the chances are all the schools are gonna be moving to this bulk ordering next year. So right now, Sandpiper and Ralston are gonna be piloting. We're very different schools. So we are piloting in different ways uh, for, they're gonna be using some kind of scanner. We're gonna punch in our numbers and just not have the kids carrying anything around. But that does look like it will be the future of 
how meals happen in BRSSD. So we are doing that now. Any other questions as we wrap up? We're doing really well on time. It's almost eight o'clock. Wanna be respectful of your time. I'm sure many students still have homework and other things to do. So any last minute questions you can put in the chat. Otherwise, you know how to reach us and you can also call the school and ask our office and get questions answered. You'll be hearing quite a bit from us over the next couple months as we learn about our new students and get to know all of you and work on electives and mouth placement and the panel. And we're really looking forward to going out to all of the other schools in BRSSD and meeting the kids. It'll be some combination of a counselor and administrator out visiting so that the kids start to get to know us. How do we sign up for the newsletter? Well, if you are part of my Ralston community, you will get that automatically. It is tied through ARIES, which is how we check grades and it's our student information system. So once you are enrolled in Ralston, you will start getting that. And those who know me, you, you will get a newsletter this summer before we wait, even start weeks before. It's pretty thorough. And I put pictures of what they're doing in the classes, events, all sorts of different information. So read through carefully. Sometimes a second read is needed, lots of details. But I want you to know what's happening at Ralston because I know what your kid does when they get in the car and you say, what did you do today at school? And I know your kid's gonna say, nothing. Well, that's not true. So I'm going to try to keep you as informed as I can with the Sunday newsletter so you at least have a glimpse into what's happening in middle school. Okay, looks like we have cleared the question and answers. Again, feel free to email us with more and I'm sure many of your teachers can answer these questions, your principals, but don't hesitate to reach out. Hope that you have a great rest of your evening and welcome to Ralston.